SCP-5082 Black Line Object Class Keter File Access Specifications As per SCPF FBI Agreement Lambda 19, this file is to be made freely available to authorized individuals within the United States government in addition to Level 4 Foundation personnel. Questions regarding access to related documents are to be directed to Dr. Cade or Dan Brule. Footnote 1. A high-ranking U.S. government official who has historically held several positions within the Department of Energy and is currently its Deputy Secretary. Special Containment Procedures Secure Perimeter Alpha has been established around the entirety of Crater Lake National Park in order to contain present anomalous phenomena. Seven secondary containment perimeters, designated Bravo through Hotel, have been established around the seven known hotspots of SCP-5082-1 manifestations, are to be outfitted with no less than two Scranton Reality Anchors to lessen instance population growth and be monitored at all times. Exploration of these spaces is to be conducted via remotely operated drones. SCP-5082-1 manifestations that succeed in breach and containment are to be recaptured and placed under observation if possible. Following a two-week observation period, the current project lead will decide on further actions. If capture is unfeasible, instances are to be terminated. SCP-5082-1 is to be kept in an inert state at all times. See Addendum 5082. 5. Description SCP-5082 is a highly complex thaumaturgical ritual that, when properly executed, grants a target human subject, thereafter designated SCP-5082-A, the ability to manipulate aspects of nearby universes as well as move between them. Footnote 2. The term, nearby universes, refers to universes near our present level in the multiverse. Refer to Dr. McMurdery, Our World and Theirs, on the structure of the layered multiverse, 2011, for additional information. This ability primarily manifests as the subject being able to merge and control aspects of local universes with consensus reality, such as moving extra-universal objects or entities into or out of our prime dimension. SCP-5082 is extremely complex in nature, and consists of several hundreds of steps, each requiring unique parameters for successful completion. Examples include the subject of ascension needing to be the firstborn child of a widow, the ritual grounds needing to be constructed in a location of divine turmoil, several ceremonial relic burnings, and even a minor element of human sacrifice. Compounded with the sheer complexity of several steps and level of precision required, the process is considered extremely difficult to properly execute, even given vast resources to do so. Despite this, evidence suggests SCP-5082 has been successfully completed a total of five times throughout human history. Of the SCP-5082-A instances subsequently created, two are unaccounted for, and the whereabouts of three are known. At present, only the Black Line iteration is considered relevant to Foundation operations. SCP-5082-A will refer to this instance throughout this document. Known SCP-5082-A instances SCP-5082-A Ein. Date completed, circa 600 BC. Origin, Babylon. Location or status, unknown. SCP-5082-A, Zwei. Date completed, medieval era. Origin, Poland. Location or status, currently located 500 universes upwards, engaging in a large-scale war with an unidentified extra-multiversal threat. SCP-5082-A, Trai. Date completed, Medieval Era. 
Origin, Ayyubid Dynasty. Location or status, unknown. SCP-5082-A, FIO. Date completed, 1917. Origin, Ottoman Empire. Location or status, subject fought for the Ottoman Empire on the Black Sea front of World War I. Later ascended 15 universes upwards before being terminated by an alternate iteration of the SCP Foundation possessing highly advanced technology. SCP-5082-A Black Line Iteration Date completed 2004 Origin United States Location or status See below SCP-5082 was successfully completed on May 30, 2004 by a clandestine United States research and development operation codenamed Project Blackline, see Addendum 5082-1, and stands as one of only five documented cases of a successful SCP-5082 completion in the current reality. Following Incident 5082-Alpha, the Foundation became involved in the project's affairs and began aiding in the containment of SCP-5082-A. The subject is currently being held on Wizard Island in Crater Lake National Park in a semi-stable state. Addendum 5082-1 Project Blackline Project Blackline functioned as a collaborative effort between several United States internal departments including the Department of Energy, Defense, and the Unusual Incidents Unit, with the end goal of creating SCP-5082-A for utilization in world affairs. The project was originally commissioned following the events of September 11, 2001, by the then-President George Bush, though wasn't fully approved until 2002. Below is an internal memo proposing Project Blackline to select department heads and federal funding management personnel. Federal Operation Proposal Project Blackline Top Secret Proposal Title Project Blackline Proposal Purpose The utilization of an esoteric ritual for the creation of an autokinetic entity loyal to the United States and said entity's application abroad in the event of international conflict. Initial funding required $2.5 billion in personnel allocation. Summary Project Blackline would consist of the preparation and execution of the ritual described in the so called Hatra Annals. Footnote 3 a set of SCP-5082 instructions discovered in Hatra, Iraq, that were used by the U.S. government to organize Project Blackline. To endow a specially selected soldier with supernatural abilities and utilize them in the event that international conflict with nations such as Iraq should become necessary. This project would be overseen by Dan Broyette, Redacted, Ray Orbach, Redacted, Chelsea Dreet, and their immediate assistance. The Federal Bureau of Investigation sub-branch, the Unusual Incidents Unit, and their key personnel would also be involved as well. Housing, logistics, and other data redacted for brevity. The project was approved in March of 2002, and a majority of Crater Lake National Park was closed under pretense of hazardous volcanic activity. A structure dubbed the Black Line Complex was gradually erected on Wizard Island to facilitate the proper execution of the ritual. Beginning on September 23, 2003, the full execution of SCP-5082 began. Addendum 5082-2 Incident 5082-Alpha At 4.10 on May 30, 2004, SCP-5082 was completed. The following is a Unusual Incidents Unit internal transcript of footage of SCP-5082's final stages in completion. The footage begins with a view of the ritual circle in the center of the Black Line Complex. The circuit is circular, 
drawn on the floor in what appears to be burning ash. Sixteen hooded figures kneel around the edge of the circuit, each holding different relics and chanting indiscernibly. The subject of ascension, Benjamin Adams, can be seen sitting shirtless and his eyes closed in the middle of the circuit, his body covered in ritualistic sigils and glyphs. 303. The fire weakens slightly, and the hooded figures cease chanting as another figure wearing a white garb enters the chamber and approaches Adams. The flames part as they cross into the circuit. 304. The figure says something to Adams, then brandishes a knife, cuts their palm, and squeezes the blood onto Adams, who bows his head. Everyone remains still as the figure's blood continues to drip. 305. The figure removes his hood, revealing a large glyph seemingly tattooed onto his bald head. He raises his arms and begins to chant quietly. The ring of fire turns golden in color, and the glyphs on the man and Adams begin to glow faintly. 307. The man lowers his hands and gestures to the other hooded figures. The figures lift up their respective relics, kiss them, then place them in the fire. As the objects begin to combust, each begins to burn a different color. The figures rise, bow, and exit the chamber. The bald man begins to sing. 311. Once the song is concluded, the bald man turns and stands at the north edge of the circle. Three shirtless men covered with glyphs enter the chamber, placing themselves at the eastern, western, and southern points of the circuit. They look at each other and nod, then proceed to initiate a complex kinetoglyph, the performance of which lasts nearly an hour. During this time, Adams is sitting cross-legged in the center of the circuit, quietly reciting hymns. 407. The kinetoglyph finishes, and a pillar of fire roughly two meters tall appears from the ring beside each of the four men. The men pause for a moment before stepping forward and gripping the pillars, which are now tangible. Adams stands, and the men begin pushing the pillars counterclockwise causing the circuit to seemingly rotate with their movements. Adams grows visibly uncomfortable. As the pillars are pushed further around the circuit, Adams begins to grunt in pain, and he slowly rises into the air. His body glows and becomes increasingly translucent. Stars in what appears to be a galaxy can be seen through him. 409. The pillars approach the point of a full rotation around the circuit, and the men can be seen shaking violently. Adams is now screaming in pain, his body glowing brighter and being nearly entirely transparent. Stars and cosmic formations are now clearly visible through him. 410. With a final shove, the four men push the pillars into place and collapse to the floor. Adams is still, and the glowing heptagram can be seen encircling him. Suddenly, he grips his head and begins screaming, his voice now shifting wildly in pitch. The video records six frames of the heptagram rotating and glowing, and a black line appearing down Adam's center. Footnote 4. Thought to be a rip in space-time. Suddenly, a powerful explosion is triggered, destroying the chamber, all recording cameras, and collapsing a large portion of the complex. End of transcript. Several long-range camp counters at the nearby Site-64 detected spatial and gravitational anomalies and dispatched agents to investigate. Upon discovering the scene, additional reinforcements were called in. Contact was established with Director Broyette, and the Site-64 agents began to assess the situation, also initiating rescue operations for all individuals still trapped in the collapsed portion of the facility. It was quickly ascertained that SCP-5082-A was unresponsive and appeared to not have conscious control over its abilities. On-site monitors soon detected the appearance of an increasing number of space-time perforations in the surrounding area. An order was quickly given to vacate the park until SCP-5082-A could be stabilized. 
An emergency airdrop for several sets of SRAs was called in, but were not set to arrive before SCP-5082-A was expected to compromise the spatial integrity of the entire state of Oregon, and then beyond in an OSS-class, multi-universal amalgamation scenario. Footnote 5 A K-class scenario in which the spatial integrity of our universe is compromised to the point where other universes and their aspects begin to mix with our own in a manner considered irreversible. At 523, Site-64 researchers Victor and Emil Huick rushed towards SCP-5082-A and began to perform PMK-97. Footnote 6 PMK-97 is a highly complex series of kinetoglyphs that halts the flow of time within a variable distance of the performers when completed. The performers are unaffected, and the effect will persist until the performance ends. PMK-97 can only be completed by a pair of individuals with strong personal and emotional attachments to each other in this case being siblings, and is extremely physically taxing on performers. Researchers Victor and Emil Huick did not survive their performance of PMK-97. This temporarily stabilized SCP-5082-A and interrupted its effect on local reality long enough for the emergency SRAs to arrive and be deployed, after which SCP-5082-A floated back towards the ground now unconscious and inert. The anomaly was declared provisionally stable, and the instance of long-term containment measures began soon after. Incident 5082 Alpha resulted in the formation of seven space-time perforations, designated Hotspots Bravo through Hotel, that represented space-time overlapping between our universe and several nearby ones with generally Earth-like characteristics. Their appearance caused additional anomalous entities, collectively designated SCP-5082-1, to begin manifesting within Crater Lake National Park. Addendum 5082-3 Hotspot Analysis Following the stabilization of SCP-5082-A, an investigation into the spatial disturbances created was begun. In total, Seven perforations in universal space-time were discovered, with each perforation leading to a nearby universe. These hotspots are not directly observable, but the effects of their existence can be seen in areas where baseline reality and these universes overlap, causing entities or objects present in one universe to become merged with our own. The following data has been compiled from various remote explorations into affected zones. Hotspot Bravo. Activity level? Very low. Connected universe hosts similar species to baseline humans with the equivalent of 19th century technology. Victorian-esque architecture is now scattered throughout the hotspot as a result of the spatial merge. Notes. The space affected in the connected universe appears to have been evacuated and quarantined. Very few SCP-5082-1 instances have been cited, and no contact has been made. Hotspot Charlie Activity level Medium Connected universe appears to be populated by technologically advanced reptilian humanoids with some awareness of anomalous phenomenon. Notes Instances have not attempted communication, but appear to be studying Earth from within the perimeter. Hotspot Delta Activity level Very high Connected universe lacks sentient entities, but possesses a massive population of insect-like organisms. Notes While activity is high, no instances have attempted to breach the containment perimeter. Biological incompatibility with Earth's atmosphere is suspected. Hotspot Echo Activity level, medium. Affected area is entirely monochromatic and populated by dark ethereal humanoids of varying size. Notes. Instances are hostile and will attack any organism encountered, appearing to have a preference for targets wearing bright colors. Hotspot Foxtrot, 
activity level, low. Connected Universe possesses extremely advanced civilization populated by human-like entities. Notes Instances appear disinterested in Earth and have only sparingly appeared near the borders of their containment perimeter. Hotspot Gulf Activity Level None Area hosts a vacuum. Terrain is barren and sterile. Slightly radioactive. Notes Vacuum does not appear to extend beyond the estimated borders of the anomaly and protrudes upwards as a roughly 100 meter tall dome. Hotspot Hotel Activity Level Low Nature of Connected Universe is unclear, but affected area has manifested massive crystals of unknown composition. Notes Human proximity to crystals causes headaches, nausea, and the release of massive amounts of dopamine into the body. Addendum 5082-4 Deliberations The following is an interview between Dr. Cade and Dan Brulette that was conducted in the days following the stabilization of SCP-5082-A. Date June 2nd, 2004 Interviewer Dr. Cade Interviewee Dan Brulette Subject Understanding the means and reason behind Project Blackline's execution of SCP 5082. Begin log Dr. Cade Good evening, Mr. Brillette. Brillette Evening, Dr. Cade, was it? That is correct. Now, I've got a few questions to ask you concerning the operation your team was conducting here. I can try to answer them, but I can't make any guarantees that you're authorized to even know about most of the stuff our operation consisted of. We have already made contact with your supervisors. Rest assured, my team and I are more than authorized to hear what you've got to say. Is that so? Brulette pauses for a moment, then sighs. Alright, where should I start? The beginning, if you would. Brulette nods. Well, after September 11th, Bush and almost every department in the Fed were losing their minds. Understandably. Al-Qaeda this, Iraq that, you get the idea. There was this energy, this panic almost, to do something, anything. Must have been a hectic position to be in, I imagine. You have no idea. Anyway, people start bringing their ideas to the table. New weapon systems, intelligence gathering proposals, and in the middle of it all was a team of some eggheads who proposed to use magic of all things to fight in the war we all knew was coming. I take it this must have been your first encounter with the anomalous? The very existence of the unusual incidents unit made it somewhat obvious that stuff like this existed, but all I'd hear about them was UFOs. Bigfoot and something about a weird polar bear. You're in the Department of Energy, though, not the FBI. Word gets around. Once you get far enough up the ladder, you start hearing whispers about this anomalous stuff taking place here and there. Rituals, symbols, blood, something like that we were employing here, but far more sinister. Peel back just a few layers of smiling politicians seemingly duty as chairman, and the anomalous becomes painfully apparent. You don't need to go into detail. No worries. I'm nearly sick thinking about it. But still, tasked with picking which proposal to use, and we ended up with another ritual of all things. I assume you're familiar with the process, then? Familiar is a bit of an understatement, but yeah. I can fill your lab coats in on the details after this. Not that you're looking to make your own, I hope. Dr. Cade shakes his head. No worries. Anyway, I saw in the documents your superiors sent us something about the Hatra Annals. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with such a document. I wouldn't expect you to be. Some eggheads found it deep in some ruins out east, in Iraq of all places. It's all written in Babylonian, and 
breaks down every step of how to perform the ritual. How they manage to figure out something so complex with such primitive technology is worrying, I suppose. Setup must have been interesting. We had to measure out every step months in advance. A single misstep in the process would mean having to start all of it over again. And as generous as the Fed can be with funding for obscure programs, even it has a limit. Why Crater Lake, though? Surely there are more convenient places to perform the ritual. Convenience was not a luxury we had, Doctor. With all those damned rules, specifications dictated our every move. One of the prerequisites was the setting of a place knowing divine turmoil. How something as bland as a lake in the middle of nowhere fits the bill is beyond me. You'd be surprised. Either way, we followed the instructions word for word, phase by phase, meeting every requirement needed, all the way to the end. I just don't understand what happened at the end. I looked back at the footage and we followed every single step to the letter. The ritual was as perfect as could be. Uh, about that. I had some of my own people looking through your files, and we believe what happened was not only was the ritual completed sufficiently, it was completed perfectly. Are you saying we did too good? Wouldn't that have just made Ben stronger in the end or something? The ritual grants the subject the ability to interact with higher and lower dimensions, but that doesn't necessarily mean it gives him the ability to understand them. It is theoretically possible to execute the ritual while making small mistakes. An extra gram of ceremonial ash here, or an extra half liter of human blood there. It hardly makes a difference. Rituals are based on belief rather than science, after all. But Project Blackline followed these rules perfectly. Something that even the Babylonians that discovered the process may not have been able to do. I'm not sure I follow. By performing absolutely flawlessly, you granted Adams access to far more dimensions than a human mind should be capable of understanding. From our best estimates, under normal circumstances, he would be able to comprehend, at most, 20 additional universes with this power. You may have accidentally force-fed him 2,000 instead. An uncountable number of new places, people, histories, and God knows what else multiplied by a hundred, and crammed into his hilariously unprepared mind. We broke him then. Yes. Briette sighs deeply and shakes his head. Well, how do we fix him? Despite everything that's happened, my people and I still have a schedule to keep with and results to deliver. Dr. Cade looks incredulously at Briette. I just told you that you created a god with more power than you or I can ever hope to imagine, and you still want to strap it to a missile and point it at Iraq? Well, when you put it that way, you make it sound like we're the bad guys. Dr. Cade stares at Briette for several seconds before shaking his head. Well, Mr. Briette, I'm sorry to break it to you, but I do not know how to fix God. Briette sighs deeply through gritted teeth and runs his fingers through his hair. So, now what? What am I supposed to tell the higher-ups? My people will take care of that. In addition, the case file for this whole debacle will be made available to you and your subordinates in the near future. As for Mr. Adams, we'll do our best to keep him stable. Uh, all right, doctor. Thank you, Mr. Briette. I'll be in touch. End lock. Addendum. 5082-5. Internal Memo. SCP-5082-A Stabilization Report. SCP-5082-A is currently being held in a semi-inert state via a combination of reality anchoring technology and thaumaturgical channels reverse engineered from SCP-5082. This installation consists the following. 17 Scranton Reality Anchors, oriented heptadecagonally around the main chamber. 13 linger class refraction dishes to divert power flow. Two molten salt reactors on site 
to maintain constant power throughout the Black Line complex. One Slavlov 4 support array to maintain structural integrity of the building. Subject While physically restrained by the technology in place, SCP 5082 A is still mentally active and is currently suffering from severe mental trauma due to its exposure to and inability to understand complex higher realities. SCP 5082 A is thought to be trying and failing to comprehend knowledge of the universes made available to it. Of these universes, only eight, consisting of our own and the seven hotspot universes, are being actively affected by SCP 5082 A's existence. As releasing SCP 5082 A from its confines is not feasible, direct contact with the subject cannot be made. Moreover, it is unlikely that the subject would be capable of coherently responding given its current mental situation. Consequently, there are no means currently possessed by the Foundation through which SCP-5082-A's psychological state can be remedied. Direct influence from a stable –A instance would theoretically help the subject recover, but the creation of another such instance is not being considered in any capacity. It is possible that SCP-5082-A would be able to recover on its own if given enough time, though the time required for complete recovery would theoretically consist of a 3 billion year long period of mental readaption to its current situation and thusly deemed unfeasible. Conclusion Containment of SCP-5082-A is to be continued as is until further notice. Addendum 5082-6 Incident 5082-Beta on December 24, 2009, SCP-5082-A breached containment. During standard operations at the complex, a massive energy surge was detected in the room housing SCP-5082-A's chamber. It was initially believed that technological malfunctions were occurring and the subject was breaching containment, but all technology was confirmed to be intact and functioning normally. At around 10 p.m. local time, the entire Black Line complex began to shake, and an entity manifested in the room. Below is a video transcript of what followed. The camera is recording SCP-5082-A's main chamber, located in the center of the holding room. As the footage begins, the facility is shaking, and several attending personnel can be seen struggling to balance themselves and flee. Suddenly, there is a flash of static across the screen, and an entity can be seen floating before the containment chamber, it's back to the camera. The entity is humanoid in appearance, its form mainly composed of flickering black and white streams of light. A large glowing heptagram encircles it around the waist. The entity floats towards SCP-5082-A's chamber and flicks its hand on the side, ripping open the metal casing and support array with apparent ease. SCP-5082-A can be seen floating in the center of the wreckage. The space around it is highly distorted, seemingly overlain with images of nearby universes, and harsh whispers and static can be heard, emanating from it. As the entity floats closer, SCP-5082-A looks up. The entity speaks, its voice a deep, echoing rumble. Entity What have they done to you? SCP-5082-A reaches a hand out and appears to attempt to speak, but only odd frequencies and bursts of static are emitted. I see. The entity floats towards SCP-5082-A. It was too much for you, wasn't it? SCP-5082-A emits static, a heavily distorted human sob. The entity grabs SCP-5082-A's hand and embraces it. It's... okay. The entity and SCP-5082-A's body fill with visual noise and begin flickering violently. Loud static, radio waves, and indiscernible human speech can be heard emitting from them, echoing into the rest of the complex. The pair releases and the entity holds SCP-5082-A at arm's length, 
their form stabilizing. You are not alone. SCP-5082-A Help. You've been through a lot. I can't. Don't understand. And... It's going to be alright. You will understand everything soon enough. What did you do? Where did the noise go? Why can I... I can hear? All I did was help bear another's burden. Now reach out. Can you see them? All those worlds? Too many buzzing, tangling, mashing. They won't stop. SCP-5082-A clutches its head and exclaims in pain. Their forms flicker slightly, and SCP-5082-A calms down. Feel them. Ordered. Sorted. Feel the structure. The energy. Yourself among it. So many, but... Order. Yes, yes, order. Do you feel the layers? The energy? That egregious intrusion so far above? Something... A whole? There's so much... Malice. That's it. Now, feel the next layer. And step. Like... SCP-5082-A grunts and glows. Both entities suddenly become translucent, and their voices grow quieter. Perfect. Again. The figures slowly grow more and more transparent, and their voices quieter as SCP-5082-A appears to be concentrating on something. I can almost feel it. The tangle. The chaos is sorting out. You're getting there but you have a lot to learn. Here. Both entities' forms flicker violently again, then stabilize. The space around SCP-5082-A is no longer distorted, and the images have disappeared. I see. I... I think I'm ready. Good. We're going to need all the help we can get. Now. Come on. We've got a war to win. The entity in SCP-5082-A promptly demanifest in a flash of static and light. Enlock Scans of residual energy and multiversal mapping have determined the entity in SCP-5082-A have retracted from baseline reality and are currently ascending upwards through the multiverse. Mapping also revealed the unidentified entity likely originating from approximately 500 universes upwards. While still active, localized hotspot activity in the Crater Lake area appears to have decreased slightly, though SCP-5082-1 instances still continue to manifest. Further monitoring of SCP-5082-A and the hotspots is ongoing. Thank you for listening to SCP-5082, Blackline, by It's Denali. If you enjoyed this SCP, please like and subscribe, and follow the link in the description of the SCP Wiki, and vote up the article to support the author and the SCP Wiki as a whole.